Yo, what's up, sports bettors? Alex here, and I have a ton of player props for you on parlay play, as well as prize picks. So I've explained this before, but this is a pretty new platform that I've been doing some videos on because there's a lot of value on parlay play. And I'm currently in California, so I have access to it. Usually I don't have access to it. But what you're going to notice is compared to prize picks, right? So on parlay play, they offer six picks. Six pick insured entries, which is pretty similar to prize picks. They're flex play, but what you're going to notice is on parlay play, if you go five for six in a flex, you're getting a 2.5x payout, whereas on prize picks, you're only getting a 2x payout. And if you go four for six, you're also getting a slight little bump right here on parlay play compared to prize picks. So the payouts in general seem to be slightly higher on parlay play. So this is an easier platform to beat. But anyways, let's go ahead. Let's get into my first pick. So a tool I use a lot is right here. This is called the Odds Jam Odds Screen. And the way it works is you can select any market you want to look at. So I'm currently on NHL Shot on Goal. And basically the way I use this tool is I look for discrepancies. If I'm looking for plays on prize picks, right? Prize picks and underdog, they work very similar to one another. You can add in parlay play right here if you want to. I haven't added it in yet, but obviously you can do that is the sports is what this tool does is it literally is just like a grid layout of all the odds where all the sports books are posting the line. So the way I use it is I look for discrepancies between, you know, underdog and prize picks. These two platforms are direct competitors. They work in pretty similar ways. So I'm trying to find value. I'm trying to find discrepancies between prize picks and underdog. And what you're going to notice is the very last one. So the one on the very bottom, Tyler Toffoli, so let's scroll here. I have no idea who this guy is, but prize picks has his line at three. Underdog has it higher at three and a half, right? So there's a line discrepancy. So if you want to take the over, obviously you'd rather take the over for Tyler Toffoli on prize picks, because if Tyler has exactly three shots on goal, you're going to push, you're going to tie on prize picks. Whereas if you took over three and a half and he has three shots on goal, you would lose on underdog fantasy. So the reason I went with this play is you can see some sports books, they either have the line at over under three and a half shots on goal, or they have the line at two and a half with the over at minus 200, right? So you can see sports books, you know, there's discrepancies. They either have the line at two and a half or three and a half, but the over two and a half is minus 200 odds. The over three and a half on the sports books that have the line at three and a half is roughly plus 100. So if you think about it, right? This is what sports books have, roughly. So I can increase the size a little bit. But, and this is how you want to think as a sharp better, right? Using data, using math. So sports books either have the line at over under two and a half shots on goal, like you can see right here on Bet Rivers, and they have that at minus 200 odds, or they have it at over three and a half shots on goal, and they have it around, you know, minus 105, kind of plus 100 odds, depending on the sports book, which you can see right here. So long story short, what you can do is kind of, you know, take a midpoint. So the only difference between two and a half and three and a half shots on goal is if Tyler has exactly three shots on goal, you're going to win the over two and a half, you're going to lose the over three and a half. So essentially what you want to do to figure out what should the odds be on the over 3.0 shots on goal is you basically just take a midpoint, right? So if the over two and a half is roughly minus 200, and the over three and a half is roughly plus 100, the midpoint would be roughly minus 150. So his over 3.0 would be priced at roughly minus 150 odds, right? So it'd be a pretty big favorite. So this is a great play to include on prize picks, right? Their line should be at three and a half in line with underdog fantasy and just taking a midpoint of where sports books have the over under two and a half, the over under three and a half shots on goal, you get roughly minus 150. So that's a great play to include in your prize picks entry, right? So the way I use this tool, it's called the odds screen is again, I'm just looking for discrepancies between prize picks, underdog, you know, there are some other ones over here, some other fantasy sites like parlay play. So we should actually probably move this over. So I can go ahead and move that to the front. You know, parlay play is another fantasy site, right? I call these sites fixed payout platforms because they don't vary your payouts based on you selecting over or under right? Like on prize picks, on parlay play, you can see right here, if I just select, select two player props, it doesn't matter if I take overs and unders. It doesn't matter if I take both overs. We're always getting the same payout, right? There's no odds on these platforms. So they're not like sports books. They're fixed payout platforms, right? So long story short, because these are fixed payout platforms, what you want to do is you want to find spots. For example, I'll show you some of the player props I went with. 
Um, another tool, this is probably the main tool I use on odd, odds jam. It's called the positive expected value tool. And what this tool does is it essentially scans the market, right? And it shows you where you can get a line on parlay play. So you can see right here, this is parlay play, this ugly logo. <laughs> and what you're going to notice is all the sports books, they have Jose Uridike, they have his under four and a half strikeouts as the heavy favorite. Right, so we have numerous data points. All these sports books, sophisticated, they've invested hundreds of millions of dollars in their ability to set lines. They're all telling us the same thing. Yo, the under four and a half strikeouts should be heavily favored. The same thing here for Dodgers Giants. Every sports book has the nerfy, the no runs first inning, heavily favored. Bet online, a really sharp sports book, right? WinBet, Caesars, FanDuel, DraftKings, all these books, they all set lines independently. They want to be unique. So we essentially have dozens of data points of sports books that have invested hundreds of millions of dollars in their ability to set lines. And they're all saying the same thing. Yo, this under, this nerfy, no runs first inning, first inning total runs under half of a total run, that's called a nerfy bet. All the sports books are saying the same thing. Yo, this nerfy should be heavily favored. So again, the screen we were just looking at is a lot more manual work, right? You can find really good plays like this Tyler Toffoli play on the screen, but it's not like recommending bets to you. You have to go through and scan for the discrepancies yourself. It's just a grid layout of all the odds. And the way I use the odd screen is I'm just scrolling through the market, looking for those discrepancies between prize picks and underdog. Whereas with the EV tool, it literally tells you the exact bets you want to place. So you just select the sports books you use. And I say this all the time, you should have multiple sports books, right? Parlay play, I just showed you they offer better payouts than prize picks. So if there's a line on both prize picks and parlay play, you want to play it on parlay play because parlay play is giving you the higher payout. So your ROI playing on parlay play, if you could get the exact same picks, would be higher, right? You're getting higher payouts on parlay play. So if a line is on parlay play and prize picks, you'd obviously rather play it on parlay play, right? So what you can see here, though, is parlay play doesn't have this line. It's only on prize picks. So sure, prize picks offer slightly lower payouts than parlay play, but they're offering this betting opportunity that isn't available on parlay play, right? So if we don't have prize picks, we're missing out on this great profitable nerfy bet. Kershaw's on the mound, right? All the sports books have the under really heavily favored. We're following the data. This is a great play to include in our entry. Kevin Durant, under four and a half assists. So long story short, a bunch of different player props, more value on parlay play this morning. You know, sometimes there's more value on prize picks. Sometimes there's more value on parlay play, whatever, all right? So long story short, when you're using this tool, let's say you want to create a parlay play entry. I've explained this before, but parlay play, um, you really want to be going with six pick ins insured entries. Those offer the best value. So what you want to do is you just want to find six picks. You can see here, six pick insured. You just want to find six picks, one, two, three, four, you know, five, six, you know, maybe you don't like the Curry play, whatever, go with this NHL play. You just want to find six picks, pair them together. Now you have a profitable entry, right? Because all Odds Jam is showing you is spots where sports books are saying, hey, an under or an over should be really, really heavily favored. So you can see here for Durant, Pinnacle, sharpest sports book in the world. They have the under four and a half assists for Durant as the heavily favored outcome at minus 139. So all the sports books, you have dozens of data points, numerous data points. These are just the sports books in New York, but you have numerous data points all saying the same thing. Durant's under should be heavily favored. You're not smarter than sports books that have the best data feeds, the best models, and have invested hundreds of millions of dollars and have hundreds of employees to make sure their lines are in check. So when all the sports books are saying the same thing, hey, Kevin Durant's under is the heavily favored outcome then that's a great play to include on parlay play because again, on prize picks, on parlay play, they don't vary your payouts based on you selecting over or under. So your job is pretty simple. Find spots where sports books have an under or an over really heavily favored, right? That's how you beat them long-term. You use the sports book odds to find plays on prize picks and parlay play where books have an under or an over really heavily favored. So anyways, we can start getting into some of these picks. So I had some from a couple previous days that I gave out for the NBA that aren't completely done yet. But here's my first one I went with, okay? So we can see Siakam under 23 and a half points. I mean, literally just grabbing plays from the EV tool. I follow the data. I never follow my gut. 99.9% .9 of sports bettors, they follow their gut. That's why they lose money. So I have Gore over four and a half strikeouts, Patrick Williams over 11 and a half PRAs, Durant under four and a half assists, Ingram under 45 and a half PRAs, 
Leonard under seven and a half rebounds, Siakam under 23 and a half points. And again, you're going to see a lot of these plays, right? They're literally just on the EV tool. So Siakam under 23 and a half points. All sports books have his under really heavily favored. And if you're one of those people who's like, I'm smarter than every sports book, every sports book's model, I'm smarter than every data point in the market. I mean, every sports book is saying the same thing. Siakam's under should be heavily favored, right? But if you think you're smarter than the sports books, that also means you think you're smarter than every other NBA better, right? Because if every sharp better, if all the sports betting syndicates and the hedge funds and all the sharp betters started hammering the over, right? This market is based on supply and demand, right? When people buy a stock, for example, the price of that stock goes up. If demand is higher than supply, the price of the stock goes up to reflect that the market is saying that the price of this stock should be higher. So it's no different here. If all these sharp betting syndicates, if they all started hammering Siakam's over, sportsbooks would move lines in favor of the over. Then the over would be favored, right? But the under is favored, right? So sportsbook odds are also a reflection of what every other better thinks, you know, if that makes sense. So unless you think you're smarter than every other sports better, you should probably just follow the data. And because sports books set lines independently, you should find value in the market and pick off, pick off, parlay play prize picks when they're screwing up. That's how you make money. I don't think I'm smarter than the market. I don't think I'm smarter than other sports betters. I don't think I'm smarter than the sports book models. I'm looking for inefficiencies, value in the market, those few rare betting opportunities. All you need is six plays on parlay play to create a profitable entry. I'm just looking for six sharp plays, right? So that's the first one I went with. So you can take a screenshot if you want. You know, here's the six picks because we're going to be going through a lot of picks in this video. And then here's the second one. Curry under four and a half threes. Matheson under two and a half shots on goal. Palomari under two and a half shots on goal, which you could see a lot of these on the EV tool. Curry, whatever, whatever, right? And then you can see Hill under five and a half hits allowed. Lucas Gelato under five and a half strikeouts. And then Uriticwai over five and a half hits allowed. And a lot of these plays I'm just finding um, on the EV tool or also on the fantasy screen. So I say this all the time, but like this fantasy screen, so you can see right here, this Rich Hill play under five and a half hits allowed just from the fantasy screen. It's kind of like the EV tool. All it's doing is showing you spots where here, you know, for example, for Rich Hill, all the sports books have is under five and a half hits allowed as the heavily favored outcome, right? So the under is more likely to occur so he's either going to go under or over. So they have to sum to 100%, right? So if all the sports books have his under heavily favored, then the under is more likely to occur than 50%. And you can see, you know, we have videos on how to back out this exact percentage, how to back out your edge, your profit margin, all these numbers here. But what you're going to notice is like, okay, all the sports books have his under favored. So the under is a lot more likely to hit. According to Odds Jam, it's 54.35% to win. So I'll include this spreadsheet in the description, but what this spreadsheet does is it tells you, okay, if your picks are winning, if, if all the picks you're selecting on parlay play are winning 54.35% of the time, your ROI on parlay play is going to be 10.54% long term, right? And literally, this is the math behind everything. No BS, all the math. Take a look at it. 10.55% ROI. If you're winning your picks 54.35% of the time right? If you can hit your picks 55% of the time on parlay play, your ROI is going to be 77%. If you can get 55% of your over-unders correctly, so you look at parlay play, right? Um, here you can see my first one, but long story short, if you can select your over-unders, so like, let's say whatever you do this, if you can select your over-unders correctly 55% of the time, so just like this, your ROI on parlay play is going to be 17.1%. Most people can't do that because they don't use data, right? And then you can see on um, uh, uh, on um, prize picks for a six flex, if you're hitting your picks 55% of the time, your ROI would only be 7.5%. So it's going to be lower. Again, that's because parlay play offers higher payouts than prize picks. But anyways, that's what I got on parlay play. So kind of using the fantasy screen, I mean, everything's based in data, right? Like it's pretty simple, this fantasy tool, just take the picks in green. The EV tool, just take the picks in green. You can add any filters you want, any sports books you want. There's 190 bucks on Odds Jam. You can see currently the top plays on Tony Bet. So you may be like, Alex, why aren't you playing this play on Tony Bet? Well, Tony Bet, I'm pretty sure is a Canadian sports book. I don't have access to it. 
right? So you may not have the same books available to, to you that I do, but the same concepts apply for finding value, right? Here you can see there's some value on Jock Market. This is another platform similar to Parlay Play, similar to Prize Picks. It actually is identical to Prize Picks for five flexes. So what's optimal on Jock Market is you want to be going with five pick insured entries, which are called partial locks. But long story short, there's value on Jock Market. If you don't have jock market, you're missing out on these profitable bets. There's value on bet rivers, right? So the more books you have, the more profitable betting opportunities are going to be available to you. But anyways, what we can do is we can just be like, okay, let's go back here. And what books do we want? We can select no house advantage, prize picks, underdog, you know, you can select whatever books you want. You can see some value kind of popping up on underdog as well. And then we can go and we can also add in parlay play. So you can see tons of sports books on Odds Jam. There's profitable bets on all of them. All these books, they want to set lines independently. They screw up occasionally. You know, we're able to get on Parlay Play, a platform that doesn't vary payouts based on you selecting over or under. Rich Hill under five and a half hits allowed. All the sports books, you have numerous data points. They're all saying the same thing as under should be heavily favored. So that's a great play to include on Parlay Play. Anyways, on prize picks, here's what I ended up going with. I have a six flex, Valanchunas over 11 and a half rebounds and beat under three and a half assists, Nerfy and Dodgers, Giants, um, Yurfy, so yes run first inning in Cubs Mariners, Barnes under seven rebounds, Tyler Toffoli over three shots on goal. So this is the play we saw on the screen. So that's a six pick flex. Again, slightly lower payouts than parlay play, but whatever. And then I also went with two five flexes. So here I removed the NHL play. I just kept Barnes, $250 five flex. And then, and I say it all the time, you should only be placing five and six flex on prize picks. So then here I replaced Barnes with Toffoli. So that's what I got, right? Using the fantasy screen, it's currently free to use. It's in beta mode. So you just go to screen, fantasy screen, free to use. You just want to take the plays in green. So if you're playing on underdog fantasy, sometimes there's more value on underdog. Sometimes there's more value on Thrive or Hot Streak or Parlay Play. So this is actually new. It looks like we just added this to Odds Jam. Um, I'm not sure if we have lines for it yet, but, you know, you should get them all. You can see right here. Look at this. Charlie Blackmon. <laughs> FanDuel has his line to get a single at minus 230. <laughs> minus 230. You can get this in your underdog entry, right? They have his over at minus 230. So that would be a crazy good play to include. So long story short, you know, a bunch of picks for you guys. Hopefully this video was helpful. The point of these videos is to be educational help everyone become better sports bettors. And uh, thanks so much for your time.